Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest in the APG webinar series. I am uh, Victor Graham, the Weight and Balance Engineering Manager at Aircraft Performance Group, and the subject today is aircraft center of gravity and envelope curtailment. Goals uh, are to explain uh, what center of gravity is and how it's calculated, uh, what center of gravity limits are and uh, why we have them. Uh, we're going to uh, cover moment arms and moments, uh, Lee Mac, Mac, and percent Mac. And at the end, we're going to uh, touch on uh, uh, curtailments of the uh, weight and balance envelope. So we're going to build on uh, the instincts that people have uh, since uh, since humans walk upright, we have a very uh, uh, instinctive understanding of weight and balance. We're, we're going to build on that. Math is fairly simple. Uh, don't get uh, too caught up in the details of the math if, if it's not uh, uh, making sense. Uh, but mostly want to uh, just uh, give an explanation and a meaning to uh, uh, weight and balance calculations. Uh, from this point on, uh, I'll probably refer to center of gravity as CG. So when you hear CG, uh, just think of center of gravity. So the first uh, thing when you talk about, though, uh, to understand center of gravity is, is a, a, a moment. And uh, this is going to come up many times during your presentation. So it is important to understand uh, what a moment is. It's also call, called a torque in many other places. So when you hear torque and moment, it, it means the exact same thing. A moment is, is equivalent to a force. So a force, uh, we understand, be a push or a pull in a, in a, in a linear uh, direction. Moment is the equivalent, the rotational equivalent, equivalent of a, of a uh, force, and it can be quantified. So moment is, is usually a talk about in terms of a, a moment about a point, and it, it's quantified by, by a force applied at some distance from that point, and the, the distance is called the arm, and the, uh, the, the calculation then, the quantity of the, of the moment is the force multiplied by the arm. And uh, we, we apply moments whenever we uh, tighten a bolt or a nut or something like that. And it can be uh, when we do it with our fingers, something like that, can just be a few inch pounds. Or in the case of a, of a large uh, wrench turned with our arms and legs, it can be uh, thousands of inch pounds. That's why, why we uh, use tools that we can, we can apply a much stronger moment when we're trying to tighten something. So to understand a moment, it's helpful to uh, start with a, with a seesaw, a couple guys on a seesaw here. So uh, when a, a seesaw is balanced, when it doesn't move, when it's level and balanced, the moments sum to zero. And uh, that's how, what we're going to describe next. So again, we're going to talk about a moment about this point, since that's where to rotate. And we, uh, when this is balanced, these moments uh, about that point will sum to zero. So we'll calculate the moments. Uh, we have uh, 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 equal weights, uh, two men uh, weighing 250 pounds each, and they're at equal distance from the uh, the middle here. So their arms are equal also. Now we're going to call one side negative and one side positive. Uh, we'll explain that a little bit later uh, because, but essentially it's because uh, the moments are going to be in opposite directions. So this guy's going to be generating a moment this direction. This guy's going to be generating a moment this direction. And when the moments sum to zero, they're balanced. And the, the uh, math looks like this. So the first, the moment of the first person is his weight times his arm, 250 pounds. The arm is uh, 60 inches in this case. Do the uh, math, we end up with uh, negative 15,000 uh, inch pounds. And uh, likewise, the guy on the right, uh, 250 times 60, but it's positive, uh, 15,000 pounds. So when we sum those up, we end up uh, with a zero, which is uh, what we instinctively understand. We have weights in equal di equal distance from a midpoint, uh, equal weights, equal distance from a midpoint, those, it's going to be balanced. So that just means that the moment sum to zero. So now let's talk about center of gravity, how to calculate center of gravity and what it is. Well, first of all, center of gravity of any object, including an airplane, if you could hold the airplane on the tip of your finger, balance it on the tip of your finger so that it was balanced, your finger would be where the center of gravity is. It, it is where the moments sum to zero. So, uh, and, and the, the, the method to calculate uh, the center of gravity is pretty simple. You will sum the weights uh, of everything that's involved, and then you'll sum the moments about any point called a datum, and we're gonna get to the datum in a moment, but if you sum all the moments around a particular datum, take that sum and divide it by the sum of the weights, the result is where the center of gravity is. So what is a datum? A datum is uh, some point, typically on an airplane, 
it's uh, near somewhere near the nose, and that is uh, essentially point zero, uh, where the is zero point. Uh, some aircraft, like the Dassault's, will have the datum on the wing, but most of them have on, on the on the nose. And the sign convention usually, or in, actually in every case I've ever seen, it, negative is forward and positive is aft. And these numbers here on the on the two men, they're they're left in the exact same location. Uh, the numbers here are their distance from the datum. So uh, this guy here is 80 inches from the datum. This guy is 200 inches from the datum. There's still 120 inches between the two of them. So to calculate the center of gravity, uh, we're going to first of all sum the weights, as we said, two 250 pound men sums up to 500 pounds. Then we're going to sum the moments about the datum. So this person is 80, 80 inches away. This person is 200 inches away. Uh, 250 times 80 plus 250 times 200 will give us a, su a sum of uh, 70,000 inch pounds for the moment. Now we would expect, since they are equal weights, we would expect the center of gravity to be exactly in the middle uh, as it was before. So 60 inches aft of, of 80, 80 inches. So we expect the center of gravity to be 100, 140 inches. And when we do that division, divide the sum of the moments by the sum of the weights, we'll find out that the center of gravity is in fact at 140 inches as we expected. So the next step I'm gonna show you here, we're just gonna take, it's gonna be the exact same calculations, it's just in a different format because it's, it's very useful for calculating uh, a center of gravity for a set of objects. So this is just uh, from, from the left side of the chart is just the individual uh, weights and arms and moments of, of each individual uh, person, in this case, a, a system. And on the right hand side is a running total. So this is the running total of the weights, so one person, 250 pounds and his moment. And then this is uh, this is running total of all the weights to, in this case, 50 pounds and 70,000 pounds. This column then is that uh, dividing the moment by the weight, uh, which will give you the center of gravity up to that point. And this is a very, uh, as I said before, a very good way to calculate a set of uh, a uh, center of gravity for a set of uh, for a system of, of things, uh, because it's easy to add things to it. So in this case, we're going to add uh, this this guy's daughter is going to be sitting right here. She only weighs 50 pounds. She's at fuselage data or at the, at, at, at uh, 180 inches from the datum. This is her weight and moment. This is the running total. And when you do the the uh, CG of the entire system, it turns out at 143.6. So the next step, then we're going to replace the beam with an aircraft fuselage and add it to the uh, to the system. We're going to add the aircraft the uh, aircraft at the top of our table. There it is, aircraft at the top of our table. And same thing, we got the running total of weight, running total of moments. And we end up with a a uh, a center of gravity here at the bottom for the entire system. And this is a this is a very simplified example of what uh, I pre or what uh, APG's weight balance calcul calculators the products uh, do. Uh, the first line is a simple example of a basic empty weight of the aircraft. You add a person up here, the pilot, end up with a basic operating weight and add the payload, or in this case, the people, and it was zero fuel weight, and from here on you would add fuel. This is exactly what uh, our calculators do uh, when you when you uh, scroll down to the grid. So next, uh, let's talk about what MAC is. MAC stands for Mean Aerodynamic Cord, and, and this is a term you see often, and you definitely see it in, in the APG calculators. Uh, mean Aerodynamic Cord, uh, the cord of, a, of an airplane wing is the distance from the leading edge to the trailing edge. And so the mean aerodynamic cord is like the average uh, cord for the entire wing. So it, uh, it represents the average wing, wing cord. And then we have a leading edge of the MAC, which would be the distance from this datum, which would be the same datum that we use for moment arms and to calculate uh, uh, center of gravity, distance from that datum to the leading edge would be the uh, what we call the LEMAC. <clears throat> and then percent MAC then is just another way to express center of gravity. And we're gonna illustrate that here. This is a out of the manual for a citation latitude, Cessna citation latitude. And it's they've clearly got their uh, LEMAC and mean aerodynamic cord identified. So 
percent MAC is just another way to represent center of gravity. So up to this point, we have represented center of gravity as a length. It's a, a length from the point to the datum. In this chart, the datum is up here. This is a zero. So the fuselage station or the, the point that is 400 inches away from the datum would be roughly here. So, and that, that would be, yeah, the, the center of gravity of 400 inches. So uh, to express that in percent MAC though, would, would tells you how far or where that uh, point is between the leading edge and the trailing edge of the MAC. So 50% uh, MAC would be directly halfway percent uh, between, 25% uh, would be a quarter of the way between, anything less than 0% MAC would be for the leading edge, anything greater than 100% would be after the leading edge. There's a very simple uh, uh, equation, I'm not going to get into it too deeply, most of the manuals explain it, but if we take an example, a point that's 43, four, and for this aircraft, it is at 436.21 uh, inches from the datum, this distance here, running through our equation, it turns out it's at 50% MAC, which of course is halfway between uh, the, the leading edge and trailing edge of the MAC. And likely, likewise, 409.45 inches calculates out to 25% MAC, which makes it a quarter of the way. Uh, from the front to the back of the MAC. So again, percent MAC is just another way to express the center of gravity. It, it, it expresses it in, in uh, relation to the wing, where it, when uh, center of gravity is expressed in inches or as a length, it is the distance from the center of gravity to the datum. So let's move on then to uh, center of gravity limits and what they are. This is a screenshot shot from uh, IPRE Flight 3, very typical uh, weight and balance chart. Along the horizontal, we have the uh, center of gravity, in this case expressed as percent MAC. Uh, forward as the numbers get lower or to the left, and, and aft as the numbers get larger or to the right. On the vertical, we have uh, weight increasing as we go from bottom to top. And then on the chart itself, this uh, solid black line would be the manufacturer's limits, and the dotted line, the dashed line, would be a curtail limit. We'll, we will touch on that uh, later. So uh, in order to fly safely, uh, you have to, the, the center of gravity and weight must be within these limits. So you plot a point uh, for the aircraft weight and center of gravity as you calculate it, plot it on this chart, and if you're within those limits, you're safe to fly. And that's what's going on here. This point here is the takeoff point. This would be the landing point, and this is uh, where the fuel's being burned. The center of gravity changes as the fuel's burned. As long as it's within this, li within this limit, uh, the aircraft is safe to fly. So this is also a citation latitude. Latitude uh, uh, envelope is roughly 12 inches wide from uh, front to back. And on the airplane itself, you can see this is where the, uh, the center of gravity uh, limits would be. So it's rel relatively narrow compared to the aircraft as a whole. Uh, but the center of gravity has to fit within those limits to fly safely. So now let's talk about why we have some uh, CG, CG limits. So uh, the two primary forces that are acting on our airplane is the weight, and the weight acts where the center of gravity is, and the lift acts roughly at 25% MAC. And it's only by coincidence if these two forces ever line up. They might for a moment, but as fuel burns, this is going to move, center of gravity is going to move, so they typically will not line up. And whenever you have opposing forces like this uh, that don't line up, they generate a moment. So in this case, where the weight is forward of the lift, it's going to generate a nose down moment. And that moment, the strength of that moment, the, 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 uh, the magnitude of that moment is directly proportional to the distance, the, the, the longitudinal distance be, between the weight and the lift. So as these distances as this distance increases, if it doubles, the moment doubles. So we'll look at the, oh, and then how does that get uh, get uh, counteracted? It, it's, it, uh, it's, it's counteracted by the tail. So these two forces want to generate a nose down moment. The tail, in order to keep this balanced, then generates a nose up moment. And when these moments sum to zero, this airplane will be level, just like our seesaw example earlier. And that's, of course, how we want to fly. If the weight is uh, after the lift, it's, it's an opposite case. The, this then wants to generate a nose up moment, gets counteracted by the tail, generating a, a, a nose down moment. And again, once all these are summed to zero, then we have a safe and level flight. 
So to further to understand why we have CG limits, we have to talk about how a wing generates lift. I think most people understand that uh, air flowing over a wing will generate the lift. And as that airflow increases, as the air aircraft goes faster, it's going to generate even more lift. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the aircraft, uh, there's a uh, angle of attack. So the angle between the wing and the airflow is called angle of attack. As that increases, it generates even more lift. And this is how uh, this is how takeoffs happen. So the pilots know ahead of time, it's calculated ahead of time. They have a, a rotation velocity or, or VR rotation speed. And they know when they hit that speed, when they pull back on the stick, the aircraft rotates, it generates even more lift. It generates enough lift to overcome the weight and uh, uh, start a climb. That's, uh, that's, that's how it's typically supposed to work. And I should also say that the lift uh, increases as angle of attack increases only to a certain point. Once this angle of attack gets too severe, uh, the wing stops working, stops lifting. That's called a stall and you, you lose all, all lift. From the wing. OK, so now if we have a case where the weight is too far in front of the lift, remember that the moment generated here is directly proportional to that distance. So if the distance gets too great, so the center of gravity is too, too far forward, the tail can only generate enough of a moment, uh, is limited to how much of a moment it can generate this way. So if this moment going this way is uh, more than what the tail can generate going this way, and, and the tail is uh, especially limited at low speeds uh, for takeoff and landing. So the aircraft is uh, going slow like on a takeoff, and this is is more moment than the tail can counteract. When the pilots go to, uh, when they get to rotate speed, rotate velocity, they pull back. The airplane is either going to feel very heavy when they pull back or, or if in extreme cases, uh, the tail cannot overcome this moment at all, and it's not going to rotate. It's not going to take off, so they have to do it. They have to abort the takeoff, and you know, depending on how much runway is left, you know things can 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 go wrong, and it, it can be very hazardous. But you're still on the ground. It's even worse when you talk about a a, a uh, an aft CG case. And that's what we're going to talk about here. So in the case where the, where it's aft, let's let's let's. Uh, Imagine this airplane is, is sitting, getting ready to take off, so there's no lift, no, no force is generated on the tail or the, or the wing. And it starts its roll. Uh, we start getting a lift generated here, and, and the tail starts doing its work back here. But and as it gets going, uh, as it goes faster, we generate more lift. Well, at some point, this moment that it generates here is going to be more than the tail can overcome. And what's going to happen is sometime before uh, the rotation speed where the pilots anticipate pulling back to take off, that moment's going to be strong enough that it's, the aircraft's going to rotate on its own. That's going to increase the, the angle of attack, which is going to increase lift even more. And what's going to, that's going to increase this moment even more. And it's already the tail can't counteract that. And if it's the right speed, if it's going fast enough to take off, the aircraft will leap off the ground before the pilots are ready and this this cycle it, it's a, it's an in, unstable cycle will continue this will continue to rotate nose up the lift will continue to rotate up or to uh, increase until eventually you're it'll be a steep climb the aircraft will start slowing down and the uh the angle of attack will be steep enough the the wing will stop working and it, it'll stall lose all lift and the aircraft will come down and there'll be no uh, there'll be no time to recover. It'll be a, a catastrophic incident. This is a very serious, very, very serious uh, condition, and it, it's very, very important that uh, this analysis is done and, and pilots understand where their, their center of gravity is so that this, this does not happen. So, and it does happen in, in, in the real real world too. This There was a case in November in uh, Argentina. There was a, a fly bondi uh, 737 uh, was taking off uh, and, and 30 uh, or at, at uh, six seconds after they applied takeoff thrust, uh, the aircraft was going 30 knots. The nose rotated up and they uh, struck the tail at only 30 knots or they, they maybe they hit a bump or something, but but the CG was so far aft that it only took enough lift at 30 knots to rotate the aircraft. Fortunately, 
since they're only moving 30 knots, the airplane stayed on the ground. They uh, uh, aborted the takeoff. Everybody was fine. Uh, I, I did find a couple of images. This was uh, this was the damage un underneath the plane. It was from the tail strike. It was fairly superficial. Uh, but uh, they also uh, there was an image showing how they had loaded the aircraft. So all the all of the red seats here are the ones that were occupied. So you can see it was densely occupied. The wing is roughly right here. It was densely. It was about 56 people loaded uh, after the wing and about 15 or so on the wing and only one person for the wing. This airplane was so far aft. I also suspect that they had uh, baggage loaded in the in the tail and probably even a, a fuselage or a, a, a auxiliary uh, fuselage fuel tank that had fuel in it. It was it was uh, just very, very severely aptly loaded. Uh, but everything uh, worked out OK with that one, with that uh, incident. Uh, so that's in-flight limits and, and what can happen if you violate them. There's also a ramp limit that's that's not uh, nearly as well known. And uh, aircraft manufacturers don't really publish this limit very often anymore because it, it doesn't happen very often in normal in normal circumstances. So in this case, this was a, an example of something happened last winter. Uh, Citation 10, uh, you can tell that it parked uh, before it snowed. Got some heavy snow probably overnight. Snow collected on the tail, moved the center of uh, gravity aft, and, uh, and then the, the aircraft uh, tipped over. Uh, this happens quite a bit. It's not hard to find uh, examples of cargo planes uh, tipping over. It, it's it's just impossible to look at the airplane and uh, know if it's getting close to tipping and, and somebody gets a little careless, it puts a little too much weight in the tail, a little too much, too, uh, too much weight or takes out too much weight in the nose and it'll just tip right over. Uh, it, it's pretty simple what goes on with tail tipping, but I think it's educational. As soon as the center of gravity gets aft of the of the main gear, that'll generate a moment, again a nose up moment, that'll uh, that'll sit. If, if the center of gravity is forward of the wheel, you got a nose down moment. Of course, the tail wheel holds it up. But as soon as it goes after that of that uh, main gear, it's going to go nose up and it's going to send out a tail. Uh, it, there's just nothing you can do about it. So let's. Uh, now that we understand center of gravity, how it's calculated, and why we have limits, and it's a good, we can talk about uh, curtailments. So uh, curtailments are limitations applied to the manufacturing envelope to account for in-flight changes in the aircraft moment or other unknowns such as uh, uh, fuel density, which can vary by temperature or even uh, uh, the weight distribution of baggage lo uh, loadings, things like that. Those can be unknowns. Uh, and, uh, but the other thing, the, the, the most important or the most common thing would be people moving in flight, getting up in a, in a business jet. The galley is typically forward. The laboratory is typically aft. And so if somebody gets up and say goes to the galley for refreshments, they're moving, they're, they're, they're changing the moment of the aircraft, uh, give, give a more nose down moment. And so a curtailment is uh, is how we can compensate that for that and and ensure that even if people are moving around in flight or the gears are tracked or slats and flats are extended uh, uh, flaps are extended then uh, this aircraft still remains in the center of gravity so over here on the right this is a screenshot from i pre flight genesis again the the white solid line is the manufacturer's the limits and the green uh, line green area would be the curtailed limits so an example here on how you calculate a curtailment. This is in this in this uh, scenario, we have a nine passenger or a nine seat aircraft. Uh, and uh, we, we're going to try to curtail for people moving to the galley. So we have a start arm, a starting uh, moment arm, which is where the seats are. And the end arm is where the galley is. And there's a CG shift that can be calculated by subtracting the start arm from the end arm. And since it's forward, we get a negative number. And the moment, the curtailment moment, the moment change, then is equal, simply equal to the occupant weight, the weight of the person who's moving times this, the center of gravity shift, which will give us a moment change. That moment change is then applied to the envelope, and that's what gives us this, this gap here. On the, this would be, since we're moving forward, this curtailment will be applied to the forward center of gravity. So what this, this accounts for somebody moving forward. So if we are flying, at this point in the envelope and somebody gets up and moves to the galley, they might move the center aircraft center of gravity to here. But so they're they're still within the envelope. But if you were flying here and somebody moved the galley, 
then it, it, you could possibly move outside the envelope. So by cutting this limit even more severe than the manufacturer's limit, we ensure that as people move, the aircraft stays in the within the limit. That's called a curtailment. And the same thing applies in the back. If somebody's moving to the lavatory, uh, we we apply a, uh, a, a a curtailment moment to that on that side too, just to ensure that they stay within within limits. So I pre in, in the past, typically what would happen just to simplify things, uh, you would calculate the worst case scenario, which in, you know, in this case, the, the aftmost person moving to the galley in the front would be the worst case moment. That'd give you the biggest moment change. And just to simplify things, that would be the moment you would apply every time uh, you did a weight and balance calculation. I preflight though, and, and Genesis uh, are capable of, of uh, real-time curtailments. And uh, this is a, this is a, a service, a, a, a unique uh, uh, capability that the APG products have. So instead of calculating the worst case scenario, it's based on how the aircraft is actually loaded. So if you didn't have anybody sitting aft of seat number five, the envelope would be curtailed only to this point instead of the worst case. And, and it would also use the actual occupant weight or whatever's entered. So it, it, in, in, most, or in many cases, if the seats aren't full, it would give you um, a more loading capability and it does all that automatically. There's no, uh, it, 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 it's, it's live as you change passengers and change loadings, the curtailments uh, uh, change to adjust to the actual uh, uh, loading that the operators put in. So that, uh, that concludes the, the, the presentation. Uh, we've covered moment arms and moments, uh, what a CG is, how to calculate a CG, um, mean dynamic cord, CG limits and why we have them, uh, and touch on curtailments and, and APGs, uh, a complete solution for them. I hope it's helpful under, to understanding aircraft weight and balance. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, I will now answer questions that have been submitted.